From the dawn of human history, mankind has always seemed to have relished violence. Primitive man fought their battles with spears and anything they could lay their hands on, such as stone. As mankind progressed down the ages, nothing has really changed except modern mankind has terrible weapons at their disposal, such as uranium depleted shells, missiles, fighter planes, drones and cruise missiles that can carry the most lethal weapon of all, nuclear weapons. For many decades the superpowers of our planet have been arming themselves with very sophisticated weaponry that could wipe the world out by many times over. The massive amounts of money spent on armory is staggering. When will the human race grow up or have they left it too late? Is global destruction inevitable? In this week's broadcast I give you the evidence that mankind is preparing for the ultimate and final war that nobody will win. This next report originates from ufosightings.hotspot.blogspot.co.uk and this was posted on December the 2nd 2013 titled Ancient Civilization and Free Energy 2013. Michael Tellinger at the Breakthrough Energy Conference 2013 Boulder. Scholars have told us that the first civilizations on Earth emerged in a land called Sumer some 6,000 years ago. Recent archaeological findings suggest that the Sumerians may have inherited much of their knowledge from an earlier civilization that emerged many thousands of years earlier in southern Africa, the cradle of humankind. Extensive scientific evaluations over a two-year period has shown that the circular structures are in fact energy generating devices using the natural sound harmonic frequencies that emanate from the surface of the earth. Adam's calendar is the flagship among these ruins because we can date this monolithic calendar with relative certainty to a time before the flood event some 13,000 years ago and at least 160,000 years of age based on a number of scientific evaluations. The shape of the circular ruins are all very specific and unique because each circular represents the systematic shapes of the sound energy as it appears on the surface of planet Earth at that point. This energy was amplified by a simple understanding of harmonics and utilized in the same way that we generate and use laser, laser beam technology today. We have measured these energies and electromagnetic waves in spectacular fashion and therefore do not hesitate to make these claims. Some of the sound frequencies go into the extremely gigahertz levels, 1 380 gigahertz, which are unheard of on Earth today in a normal application. The fact that these circles are all connected by the tone channels makes it very clear to any scientist who works with electricity of energy that this vanished civilization had a keen understanding of energy that still escapes us today. South Africa was a giant energy grid that was all connected for the purpose of mining gold and all other activities necessary for supporting the vast population that listed over 270,000 years until it was wiped out by the flood some 12,000 years ago. Michael also shows how the manipulation of the human race has continued over 250,000 years by exposing the origin of the royal bloodlines and how they continue to manipulate human activity today mainly by controlling the supply of energy and the control of money. Based on these discoveries, Michael Tellinger proposes a new social structure to liberate humanity from its eternal enslavement, a philosophy for the survival and prosperity of the human race that he calls contributorism. To view Michael Tellinger's Energy Movement Conference, go to my website intimes23.com where I've posted the link. This next report originates from GuardianLV.com titled UFO Sightings Increase, Canadian Defence Minister says US must discuss. And this was posted by Casey Menasotis on November the 9th, 2013. 
images captured from International Space Station. The former Canadian Defence Minister Paul Hellyer called on governments, namely the US, to disclose information about increasing UFO sightings. While shocking to hear from a government official, in 2013 governments are not able to keep UFO sightings secret like previously done in the past as pressure increases. Blame is placed on current drone activity and missile testing. Canada. Paul Hellyer, an engineer and politician, spoke out in front, of, in front of Congress and declared from his reports that there are alien species, four types specifically identified. Different types have different agendas and there are aliens living on Earth right now. The 2012 Canadian Ufology Survey released a report that revealed the number of UFO sightings across Canada doubled since the year before, now a record high of around 2,000 sightings in one calendar year. Mobile phone access reaches three quarters of the population. UFO sightings are captured in real time and uploaded to numerous forms of social media as images or video. Activity has increased so much around the world that the even airports have been shut down due to unidentified activity in the sky. China, UFO sightings around the world increase and Canadian minister speaks out. Images captured over Exian Airport in China. China closed the Exian Airport when a strange glowing object was spotted in the sky. Inbound and outbound flights were delayed for four hours. The residents of Hangzhou uploaded photos online of a hovering object covered in a golden hue and said the flying object emitted red and white emissions of light. Russia, Norway spiral UFO sighting, image captured over Norway. Many UFO sightings in Norway, Israel, Turkey, Cyprus, Lebanon and Jordan have been blamed on Russian missile testing. Italian astronaut Lucia Pamianto captured an image from the International Space Station while his colleague Mike Hopkins tweeted that he saw something launch into space today and he was not sure what it was but the cloud it left behind was pretty amazing. Mexico. The US needs to discuss sightings of UFOs, says Canadian minister. Image captured over Mexico. Camera and video captured a large group of unidentified foreign objects in the sky over Guadalajara, Peru. Due to increased sightings of anomalous aerial phenomena in Peru, the Air Force announces it is reopening the office responsible for UFO investigations. Colonel Julio Wunsch, the head of the Air Force Aerospace Interest Division, told reporters that many people don't report UFO sightings and declared that it is because they fear they will be labelled mad or made fun of. But nowadays, with new technology, cell phones, videos, Facebook, Twitter, they can be much more open without feeling that they are the only ones who have seen what they've seen. USA. The National UFO Research Center in the US said UFO spottings increased 42% from 2011 to 2012. Drones are currently being blamed for the increase. The CEO of the drone consulting firm Unman Response, Tony Halliott, summed up the overwhelming response from the public as they'll see something flying around their neighborhood with an LED light on and it'll be an unidentified flying object for them. Nobody can be quite sure about what they are seeing. They can, however, find comfort in fellow onlookers seeing the same sightings and capturing it from all angles. According to some governments and organizations, UFO sightings are increasing. As they flood the internet, the former Canadian Defence Minister Paul Hellyer is joined by the citizens of the world in awaiting to hear disclosures from the US on the subject matter. Although official statements from any governments in the world are rare, the internet might create the right kind of pressure for a discussion by Casey Manasotis, CNET, Time, South China Morning Post and ABC. This following report originates from destinationyearsrail.biblesearchers.com titled A Picture of the Death Angel, the Twin Binary Star Nibiru 
on the right taken at Pacific Beach, Washington on July the 13th, 2013. This is Be Caused in part with the curator GD, bringing back his planetary death angel that flew over the great imperial power of Egypt and destroyed the Egyptian empire for many generations. So today the Death Star Nibiru is a dark dwarf binary star the size of Jupiter and 10 times the mass of our largest planet is returning to revisit planet Earth after a 3,600 year journey into outer space and back. It is all but assured that there will be a pole shift as our magnetic north pole has been speeding up every year on its way to a new polar centre somewhere in Siberia. The destruction of the Earth's mega cities will wipe billions of peoples from the face of the Earth. Large sectors of the Earth will be inundated or subducted with mega tsunamis as large cities will disappear as they have done in the ancient past. It is expected that with just the effects of global warming that the elevation of the waters of the oceans will increase by over 200 feet. Those figures escalate upwards to over 650 feet with certain conditions of major tectonic changes that are destined to transform the whole earth. A lot of these changes will be done as they were at the time of the exodus by the global destruction of planet earth during the passage of the death angel of the exodus. The return of Nibiru, the red dwarf star, and its entire solar system, making our solar system a twin star solar system, as most of the other solar systems were also created to be. A hit from any of its planetoids or asteroids would spell disaster around the world, where we would lose upwards to three-fourths of the population of planet Earth. This will be a time of intense stress and tribulation. The Nazarene Orthodox Jewish prophecy of he that endures until the end shall be saved suggests a reality in its most literal intent. But the GD of Israel has proclaimed that the only place on planet Earth he will protect is his Zion in the land of Israel. Yet it also does suggest that if the GD of Israel proclaims that you are safe to save, to live in a world of peace and are willing to live the life of Torah in the world to come. Your destiny is assured, but you must be willing to come home and live in peace and fellowship with your tribal brother, the Jews of the house of Judah, willing to live a life of halakha by the divine blueprint of Torah observations taught and governed by the Messiah and his Meaquek, the rabbinism as the legal jurist in the world to come. This era of apocalyptic catastrophes is about to be unleashed upon our world in a way not witnessed since the days of the Nocherian flood. As in the days of Noah, if you were not on board in the safety of the ark in the week before the flood, your destiny of doom was clear. So for those lost Israelites and Jews in the dysphoria who emigrate to Israel and become one of the peoples of the book, you will be also blessed to be participant in a time of great spiritual elevation. At this time, the GD of Israel will be bringing home the descendants of all the children of Israel home to their tribal lands of their forefathers and once again to be one nation under GD as they asserted to become the nation of Israel as they beheld the fiery manifestation of the Almighty One of Israel witnessed from the base of the mount called Sinai. This next report also originates from destinationyearsrael.biblesearchers.com and this was posted on the 18th of December 2013 titled China, Russia and Iran prepare for Daniel's prophetic war against America and NATO Europe. Do the Jewish rabbinic prophecies give us a timeline for the final events on planet Earth? The 2013 East China Sea Air Defense Identification Zone 
It is a well-known fact that the nations of Iran today has two chief allies, Russia and China. They have stood by Iran through the thick and thin, especially with controlling interest as permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. Without Russia and China, Shiite Iran would have been history decades ago. Today, again, they are proving they will be prepared to stand in opposition to the United States and NATO because all four are vying for the world dominion. So also the rest of the world's prophetic nations are aligning themselves either for or against of the two global forces. If we think that this is a static condition, think again. On the heels of the Geneva Agreements in which China was one of the six world powers within hours after the Geneva Agreement, China published the coordinates for their bid to take complete military control of the East China Sea. Called the East China Sea Air Defense Identification Zone, China claimed that the disputed and uninhabited islands known as the Senkaku in Japan and the Diaoyu are within their realm of international control. It therefore gives the territorial dominion over these islands if they are now united under China's military control. China also published the warning that any aircraft flying over this region could provoke defensive emergency measures against the aircraft that failed to identify itself. Suddenly, the United States, in an act of defiance to China's changing the international rules controlling this region of the East China Sea, dispatched two unarmed US B-52 bombers to fly over the disputed islands accepted by the international community as belonging to Japan. This was done while doing training maneuvers in the East China Sea. Japan followed suit as their planes continued to fly through this new airspace zone. With this posturing concerning who has the right to change or not to change the international rule of control concerning this region, Sun Zi, a professor at the Center for US-China Relations at Tsinghua University in Beijing, stated, if the United States conducts two or three more flights like this, China will be forced to respond. If China can only respond verbally, it would be humiliating, especially in a region where the concept of a paper tiger is very important. Okay, my friends, you're all invited to join this channel by subscribing to End Times 23, which is a totally free subscription service. You're also invited to add me as a friend on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. If you'd like to drop me a line on my blog, by all means do so. And if you'd like to join one of my circles on Google+, you're more than welcome to, my friends. All the links are under this video. All this week's news links can be found on my website, endtimes23.com. The link is under this video. Just click on the link and go to the top left-hand corner of the opening page and click on the Cosmic News link. You will find all this week's news links at the top of the page under this week's title video. Well, that's your lot for this week, my friends. I do hope you enjoyed the show. I'll be back with you in a week's time with another edition of Informing You. So until then, this is your informer signing off, friends. I'll see you on the flip side.